Why is it so rare to convict a police officer for shooting an unarmed suspect? The answer has something to do with qualified immunity. The Supreme Court granted this special protection to public officials, like law enforcement officers. To bring a civil lawsuit against an officer, the plaintiff has to find a clearly established precedent showing that the officer's actions were unconstitutional. This means that a police officer cannot be held legally responsible for violating your civil rights unless a court has already established that that exact conduct is illegal. Qualified immunity came under increased scrutiny during last summer's Black Lives Matter protests. Now there's a new push to end this precedent. More than 1,500 business leaders, artists, athletes, advocates, and lawyers are supporting the campaign to end qualified immunity. Two of the co-chairs of that campaign are Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, better known as the founders of Ben and Jerry's, and they both join us now. Gentlemen, good evening. How you doing? How are you? Good, good. Uh, I hope you don't mind if I just call you Ben and Jerry, because I think that's just the easy way. First of all, which one of you is Ben? Raise your hand. The only way we do it. Yeah, Ben, raise your hand, just so people know which one is who. Oh, yeah, I'm Ben. Okay, good. Ben is on the left, Jerry's on the right. Ben, let me start with you. What would ending qualified immunity involve? Since it was a Supreme Court precedent, does that mean that you have to fight it back to the Supreme Court or pass a law, or what's the end game? Uh, there were two options, either to fight it back to the Supreme Court and uh, Justice Clarence Thomas and uh, Sotomayor. They both wanted to revisit and probably overturn qualified immunity, but the rest of the court wouldn't do it. So uh, now it's really up to the legislature and they just need to pass a law affirming the law that they passed back in the 1870s which specifically allowed people to sue uh, government employees who had violated their constitutional or civil rights. Now, Jerry, qualified immunity has been taken up by Congress before. There was a bill last summer that died in the Senate. What do you think of the prospects, Jerry, for legislation now? Well, I think particularly after the protests, after the murder of George Floyd, there is renewed interest in police reform. There is a crisis in law enforcement and people know something needs to be done. It's already been passed in the state of Colorado. And so that showed that it's possible. And there is a broad coalition of groups that are supporting this, ranging from the ACLU, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, the Leadership Council, all the way to the Cato Institute and the Institute for Justice on the libertarian side. So it's a very broad uh, coalition. Ben, you wrote an op-ed in USA Today and called qualified immunity not only harmful to the public, but also, quote, detrimental to the reputation of good cops, unquote. Talk more about that. You know, that's absolutely right. I mean, we need cops that want to be held accountable, that are willing to be held accountable. And when you have bad cops that are not held accountable, that destroys the community trust in the police department. And you can't police if the community doesn't trust you. And it's a two way street. You get trust from the community if you are willing to be held accountable. But if you got a get out of jail free card and anytime you go and brutalize or murder or worse, uh, you, you just get off scot-free, that destroys trust in the community, and that makes it harder for the huge majority of good cops to do their job. Jerry, I can understand the argument of some law enforcement officers. I have law enforcement in my family, and I can understand the argument of some officers who say, we want to do the right thing, but police officers have to make split second decisions. In the time it would take me to throw this pen at the camera, I could have a suspect lunging at me with a weapon or pulling a gun, and I have to make a decision to save his life, to take his life, to save my life, to take someone else's life, to run around the corner, to stop a suspect right now. And I need some flexibility in the law because I'm human and I won't get everything right. How would you respond to that? 
I think that's absolutely right. And police do have protection. Uh, they have protection if they make decisions that are reasonable and in good faith. And uh, I think what qualified immunity does is it gives pretty much blanket protection for incompetent police and police that are knowingly breaking the law. And that is the real problem. You know, we talk about accountability. Ben and I are both business people. And I can tell you in business or in any other institution, accountability is the key to getting good results. If you don't have accountability, nothing gets done, nothing works. Ben, could I ask you just more broadly about the nature of your activism in the last few years? I know the two of you, you're no longer running the company day to day, but you've been able to use the success of Ben and Jerry's, the name recognition to pursue causes that are important to you, which to be clear, you were doing that as well when you were running the company day to day. I have to uh, narc on my fellow uh, journalists here on the show team. As soon as the commercial began right before your segment, they started chatting about their favorite flavors of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. So you two have a very <laughs> fond place in people's hearts. What is your sense of how corporations are standing up for causes, particularly racial equity, standing alongside the Black Lives Matter movement? It felt like a whole lot of companies jumped on the bandwagon in the last 12 months. Ben, what do you think of that? It was great to see those statements from businesses in support of justice and fairness and equality. Uh, you know, now we need to see some action behind those words. It's time to move from protest to policy. And that's what qualified immunity is. It's a policy that stems from those protests. I mean, we're not talking about situations where police have to make a split second decision. We're talking about a situation where a guy is driving by on a bicycle and within six seconds of the police seeing him, they shoot him to death. I mean, he was not a threat to them. This was not something, oh, it's them or me, you know, he's about to, no. And, and they, we have a book coming out that has 17 examples, 17 stories of that kind of thing where, you know, some little kid is uh, in the midst of uh, some chase with, yeah. uh, with a robbery suspect and the cop tells him to get down on the ground. He gets down at the ground and somehow or other the cop decides that he wants to shoot the kid's dog, but he misses the dog and shoots the kid and he gets off scot-free. This is not split-second decision-making. This is just, you know, incompetency. I've had incompetency of employees that I've had. Right, right. They got fired. Ben Cohen, Jerry Greenfield, co-founders of Ben & Jerry's and co-chairs of the Campaign to End Qualified Immunity. Gentlemen, we appreciate you making time. Thanks very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.